Let's give God a, a one more shout of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, God. We thank you, God. Thank you, God, for you are good. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Well, good evening, Glad Tidings. Good evening. Welcome to Glad Tidings. And to our family online, welcome. We are praying for you, and we are believing in what God will do in our lives, what God will do in your life. Because you know what? The Bible says God can do immeasurably more than what we can even think or ask. So God is good, and we are believing in God tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Well, one very exciting announcement for this coming Saturday, June 4th. Um, our very own Howard Rajinsky is coming back to the house. And Howard Rajinsky, he carries the DNA of glad tidings. He carries the DNA of prophetic worship. So for everyone who's interested in worship, everyone who's interested in music and tech and media, we welcome you to come this Saturday, June 4th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And on Sunday, um, Howard Rajinsky will be joining us and so will the Holy Ghost Choir. So come in anticipation, look forward to it, and let's just worship God together. Amen. Thank you. 
Aleluya, aleluya. Sí. Continue singing. We just sang, He is our daily bread. We are lost without Him. And the Bible said, The Lord make us rich. And the richness that comes from the Lord is without sorrow. Every day we need our daily bread. And the Lord is our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. And we believe, can we just sing one more? That we are desperate without Him. Can the choir just sing this song one more? Sufficiency is from Him. If we have Him, we have everything. Pastor K has been going to the Arctic for 70 years. And Arctic and the Uganda mission was the two very first missions that was from Glad Tidings. And Pastor K is not the person to ask for giving to the Arctic. I'm going to do it on her behalf. At 88 years old, our pastor is going to the Arctic with high tech. Isn't that amazing? We are going to have an online Zoom teaching Bible school and also preaching from, uh, from GT, from any of the pastors, to go into the Arctic. 
You can be seated, please. The ushers can get ready. And we need to have uh, TV cameras, we need computer, and we need to link up with the network. And so I don't have to go to the cold, I can be here and reach out to the Arctic. I like that. Praise the Lord. This month, the mission will be giving to the Arctic, and we need about 25,000 to begin with. And I hope all of us give generously. But tonight, I'm going to talk about tithing. Tithing is 10%, and that's non-negotiable. But there's another giving, which is another 10%. It's called the love offering that gives to the mission or any church uh, needs uh, helping the poor or outreach. And you saw this piano here was no donated by one of the early uh, Glad Tidings members. And this family, I get to know them very well. And Art and Elsie told me that when they came to Canada, the first two years, they were struggling. Like all of us, right? When we came here. And they, they had a business, the two brothers, and they share only one car. And they were in the glass business and they buy the glass only piece by piece. But now they own TransCanada glass all over Canada and many other businesses. And one time in church, they had only $20. And they have two sons. There's a Art and Elsie. They have only $20. They have two sons. And the church was calling for a mission offering. And the Lord just told them, give. So, after they give the $20, they have nothing less, nothing left. So, they cannot go out for lunch. They had to go back with just milk and toast. But the amazing part, 10 days later, they receive a letter from England, their relatives. And the letter said, you have been in Canada for two years and we have been wanting to bless you. We have been wanting to bless you. Somehow we keep delaying, delaying until about now the Lord asks us to make sure that we bless you with something. And they got 200 pounds for the $20 they gave. God bless. And from there, they are very blessed. So, we know that what we sow in the kingdom of God, sowing and reaping is, is the law of nature. What you sow is what you reap. So, today, I would ask everyone to sow willingly and with joy. And the people online, we know that you have been sowing. You have been giving to glad tidings. And we appreciate you. We appreciate, we cannot see you, but we want to thank you that you're uh, helping Glad Tidings to fulfill the work of God, the purpose of God in Vancouver. We have three ways of giving. One is by coming to join our service. Another one is drive by 3456 Fraser Street or by e-transfer. E-transfer is a... Uh, finance at gtchurch.ca and can the ushers please come and receive our tithing and while they are receiving I'm going to pray Lord these are the seeds of faith in faith we sow into your kingdom and we believe we have a very trusted team in glad tidings every cent that you give, it will be sown into the kingdom of God. And every seed that is sown, we declare there will be a hundredfold reward. <clears throat> As the usher is taking the offering, I want to read the scripture, Luke chapter 5, verse 5 to 7. 
Luke chapter 5. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Nonetheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Verse 6. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Verse 7. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat and come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. Now, these are very experienced fishermen. And they know where to catch the fish. They have, their livelihood is catching the fish. But they toy all night. They couldn't get anything. And Jesus said, you, lock, you cast your net to the right side. I believe right side, left side, front side, back side, they had tried the whole night. But they caught nothing. You know, sometimes our gifting in doing certain things, we have tried every way, but it doesn't seem to bring any result. But at the word of Jesus Christ, they just cast it on the right side and they have more than enough. Overload the fish, the, uh, the, the boat, they have to ask another boat to help. So the word of God said, give and it shall give it. Shaken together, running over, shall God bless you. When you sow, you shall reap. So at the word of God, we believe when God said, give your tithes unto the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. We just give. And God is not a man who lie. There's one thing God cannot do. He cannot lie. When he said, you sow, you will reap. And that is for sure. And I, 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 when I read this, I say, how the fish all go to the right side? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? When God said, you go, they go. So when God said, pour down a blessing that you have no room to contain, the, the money, the blessing, health, prosperity, love, joy, and peace will pour down into your family. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Can we sing that song? You are great. You do miracles so great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles. There is no one else. 
deserve the glory. Amen. We serve a great and wonderful God. Please be seated. And we just sang, you are great, you do miracles so great. And whatever you sow in faith, God is going to do a miracle. Great and wonderful miracle. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've been in glad tidings since 1975. Since I came from Singapore, Elaine, Eunice, and my son literally grew up here. And this is my home. And I've seen glad tidings, changing pastors like changing clothes. <laughs> and... Uh, Mary, I used to sit with Mary, and every year end, I would go to Malaysia to spend about two months with my mom and dad, and usually around October to December. And so many times, I went back to Malaysia. When I came back, oh, we got a new pastor. <laughs> we got a new pastor, and Mary used to see me tease me. Did you do something about it behind the church in Malaysia? <laughs> Did you have anything to do with it? Mary used to tease me. But Pastor Short and Pastor Jodian, we thank God. We thank God. They are truly God sent. Great. When we let the previous pastor go and the lot of congregation came to ask me, how can you trust thee? Let the pastor go without another pastor in place. 
And then they asked us, who will be our next pastor? I said, I don't know. How long is our next pastor coming? I don't know. Pastor K and I and the team of that do the pastor search committee, that we just pray. We just fasted and prayed. Fasted. And it was almost five and a half months before we knew and Pastor Short was confirmed. Amen. So Pastor Short and Pastor Jodian, it's not that we search for them, but God sent them. That is from the Lord. Pastor K and myself, we were a bit same age, so we talk better. <laughs> so the two of us, there were five applicants. The two of us, Pastor K and myself, we sort of, sort of knew it's Pastor Short. But we still have to go through the procedure. And when God has sent somebody, everybody say yes. Amen? And we thank God for the, the move that is coming into glad tidings. We can see the change, a wonderful change, physical and spiritual. And at this point, I was just saying that so much has been progressing, moving so fast. It's like an aircraft, the airplane. It's not anchored, it's not stationed at the gate door anymore. The aircraft is gone to the runway and the engine is rolling and the aircraft is gaining speed. And it's going to take off. Amen? Are you excited? Especially last Wednesday prophecy. It really got me so excited. So before the aircraft can airborne, fasten your seat belt. Take, make your seat upright. Get ready. Amen? We are going to fasten the seatbelt and we are going to fly. So, the amazing, we have amazing worship team. We really thank the Lord. Pastor David was ordained Sunday as our worship pastor. And I can tell you afterwards, he is a miracle child that God has prepared. Lord, I just commit this time into your loving hand, Lord. Your hand may come before you and ask of you, Lord, speak to us. Cleanse our heart, cleanse our mouth. And what your handmaid say is totally from you. Because only your word will not return unto you void. Speak, Lord, through your handmaid. Holy Spirit, anoint the speaker and everyone that hears under the same unction of the Holy Spirit. That we see no one but Jesus high and lifted up. Because you say, when you're lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. Lord, draw us. The song the pastor always said, closer to you. Draw us closer to you. Near to the heart of God. We pray in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Tonight's message is, what is your worth? Last Wednesday, the prophetic word was, arise and shine. For the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you and me. Uh, arise and shine. Those of you online and those of you here and myself, we have to arise. The winter is over. The winter is over. I can hear the birds singing, the flower blooming. Because my beloved say unto me, Come, my dearest, my loved one.
come with me, God is saying tonight to glad tidings. My beloved, my dear ones, come with me. The winter is over. And we have to arise and shine. Arise and shine. It's so important that we have to arise. It's an action. You cannot just say, my mind is thinking, I know what is arise, I understand what is to arise, what is to shine, but you don't do it. It doesn't matter. You can sleep and think about it a thousand years, nothing happened. So today we have to take an action. Arise and shine. And Vancouver and the world and everywhere is so dark. It's so dark. It's like in Genesis. The world was in darkness. But the Holy Spirit hoover over the face of the earth. Holy Spirit is hoovering here. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The Holy Spirit is hovering in each and every one of our life. Our situation, it might be in darkness, it might have no hope, but the Holy Spirit is hovering. And when God said, let there be light, there was light and everything come into order. Commotion and disorder came into order and life, life. There's bird, there's tree, there's water, there's river filled with treasures. And then God put man to look after his garden. Aren't you glad you're the one that God has given you? The authority for this earth. Amen? But Adam surrendered it to the Satan. Adam gave Satan the blank check that God has given him. Today, we are going to restore. That's why Pastor last Sunday said, my Redeemer liveth. Everything that you have lost, God is going to give you back. Thousand times. He's going to restore. And glad tidings is going to be restored even more glorious than the former house. Because the glory of God is not limited to a time and way. The glory and the work of God, the goodness of God is always beyond what we can think or imagine. He is unlimited. You know when your corporate company is limited company, but God's company is unlimited. The church is unlimited. So, once I was in Malaysia, I was teaching the youth group Bible study, and suddenly there was a blackout. Totally pitch black. It, even the street lights and everything was off. It was totally pitch black. And I was saying, oh no, we have to stop. But you know, the youth, they are very fast. They switch on their handphone. One starts switching on, everyone switch on their handphone. And what happens when the handphones are all on? There's light. Although it's a small light, when there's so many small light all turn on, the whole room is bright. Can you remember when you, we were young, this little light of mine? Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen? We might have just a small light. Huh? Just shine. Amen? When we are together, we form a big light. So I always, I led the nation of Malaysia to pray again uh, for a good government. I told them, you don't pray against the darkness. The whatever that is wrong. It's like when a room is dark, you just, when you pray, darkness, darkness, go, go, go. In Jesus' name, I cast you out. In Jesus' name, I cast you out. It won't go. The thing is, you switch on the light, it go. That's it. So simple. 
So simple. When you have the light, the darkness will flee. They cannot coexist. And the light will take over the darkness. So let us rise. Jesus said, I'm the light. We live the life of Christ in us, so we shine. And the darkness has to flee. In your home too, you just shine. You just shine for Christ. You just have the life of Christ, the light of Christ. Your home will turn into daylight. We'll have order. When you're in the light, you know where the pitfall is. You can see what is in front. When you're in the dark, you tumble, you fall, you hurt yourself. You are fearful, you're desperate. But once the light comes, everything is totally in place and you have safety. Amen? So the next verse, Psalm chapter 2, verse 8. This is a verse that uh, when I was in Glatheding in the early 70s, that we always pray, always pray. Because Glad Tidings is founded as Glad Tidings Missionary Society. My husband and I, we were ordained under that name. Glad Tidings Missionary. So mission is Glad Tidings well. It's Glad Tidings life. That's why when Pastor Short came, he started giving to mission and also when the trustee it, uh, we, we make uh, effort that 10% of everything we give even the rental everything 10% goes to mission and once you start giving to mission God bless I have served the Lord since 1963 in my father's home as a Sunday school teacher until now and my husband and I, we have tested and tried. If you put mission first, God will bless the church. Whichever church put mission. When we started at Amazing Grace in Penang, we have no fun. And Jerry, my husband, said, I don't want to take any salary. My salary goes to mission. Ulema. And you know, although he said, I don't want to take, he was never short. The church was never short. Never had to cut off any of his pay. God, and every time the church has surplus in the hundreds of thousands, when the good put God first, that is all the years. And we never took care of the business side of the church, my husband just told the uh, trustees, if you need me to talk about raising money, you tell me we never had to. God is our provider. Amen? So we ask, ask the nation. So glad tidings, the prophecy is the rock, the big rock, and God has given us the authority to win the nations for him. The Arctic, the Uganda, and Israel, uh, India, and uh, Taiwan, and then Liberia, and then now Philippines. And we are going to expand. Ask of me the nations for your inheritance, the ends of the world for your possession. And we ask for Vancouver. We ask for Canada to be God's possession. That is what God wants us to do. And Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 10. And God used people who are not like God's, when God so. Uh, uh, chose Saul, the people chose Saul. He was one head above every other. He was good looking. He was everything. But that is not God's choice. God doesn't see the outside. God sees the inside. Let us read uh, Jeremiah. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, 
That is to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I sent you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Verse 8, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root up and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, and to build and to plant. Jeremiah, before he was born, God called him. God called him. And Jeremiah said, I'm just a child and I can't speak. When God calls you, he qualifies you. When God calls you, he equips you. He will provide you. The key is his calling. He calls, he qualifies. Talking about before you were born, that the Lord said, I knew you. Before I formed you in the mother's womb, I knew you before you were born. Pastor uh, David, I knew the parents when, before David was born. They became a Christian before uh, Pastor Judy conceived David. And the minute David was conceived, she was threatened with miscarriage. She bled from the first month to the ninth month. I, if I remember correctly, twice she was hospitalized. The baby just cannot stay in the mother's womb. You know, be, before even David was born, the enemy was contesting for his life. All of us, when God chose us, the enemy is going to come in many forms and ways to take you out of God's purpose and God's destiny calling in your life. We fasted, we prayed. So on Sunday when David was ordained, I was in tears because I remember how we fasted and prayed. And now this boy is a pastor. Praise the Lord. If we have not fasted and prayed, he wouldn't be here because the enemy was all out. Nine months. And Pastor Judy told me, if I were not a Christian, David wouldn't have been born because if they were not a Christian, they wouldn't have fasting and praying and crying to God, right? So the mother always said, because I was a Christian, David was born. Amen? So today, you're all here. Healthy, sitting here, smiling. You are called by God. And you have no excuse. No excuse. Every one of us. And speak to kings and nations. Don't look down on yourself. What you cannot do, God can do. His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. With God, all things are possible. So it's not you, it's God. Let us turn to the next one. It's uh, Psalm 103 verse 14. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And verse 14, 
For the Lord knows we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Dust. You know when God cursed the snake in the Garden of Eden, God said, from this day forth, you shall crawl on your stomach and sh you shall eat what? Dust. That's why we are his target. You shall eat dust. But thank God, he cannot eat me. He cannot eat you because of the blood of Jesus Christ, of the victory of the cross. He was already defeated under the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He cannot eat us. And not only he cannot eat us, God is going to take this dust, this dust, and make something wonderful. Amen? Let us watch the video. God makes beautiful things out of the dust. That the snake wanted to eat and cannot eat because of the redemption power of the Lord. And he's going to make something beautiful. When I was in England in 1960, I took a pottery and clay modeling, modeling class. And at that time, we have a tank of clay. This clay has always had to be soaked in water. And then we would take out the clay 
And before I even take out the clay, I have in mind what I wanted to, to make, how big, how, how much I want the clay. So as I took it out, our first lesson is to make sure there is no impurities in the clay. Any sand, any, we have to feel it. That is no sand, no impurity in the clay. And then we will take the clay and throw it on the hard surface. Throw and throw and then press. What is that doing? Take out the air. Take out the air that is in the clay. You know, Pastor Short says inside out. Make sure the inside is clean and no air. Air, arrogance. Pride. God taught me a lesson on being proud. Very hard lesson that I will never forget. In Penang, on Sunday, we have two services. And in the morning is bilingual. And then in the evening is the language, uh, uh, is uh, what we call Hokkien, which is Taiwanese. And I was preaching in the morning a very good message. And then after preaching, I sang the altar call song. And people were touched with the Holy Spirit. There was a mighty move of the Spirit. God was moving very mightily. And I say, God, I give you all the glory, give you all the thanks. And I went home. Malaysia is very hot. So in the afternoon, I took a short nap. When I woke up at 5 o'clock to prepare for the evening service, I totally lost my voice. It's, my air come out, but cannot make sound. You know, it's very scary. No sound. You cannot make sound. You have the air, but no sound. So I went to church. I wrote a note to the worship team. Pastor, K, uh, Pastor Jerry is always in China. So I was alone and I wrote to the worship team, keep worshiping. And then wrote to the leader of the worship. Anyone has testimony, ask them to come up because I cannot preach. And amazingly, someone from England who is my husband's good friend, an evangelist from England, Reggie Lee, Pastor Reggie Lee, came, wanted to find Pastor Jerry. I said, Pastor Jerry, I told him, Pastor Jerry, he said, I had to write a note, Pastor Jerry, can you preach tonight? You know, when somebody came from a cold country to Malaysia, he wears shorts and T-shirts. And so we asked somebody about his size to change his shirt, change his trousers. But his feet are so big, no shoes can fit him. So he had to go bare feet and preaching. That got the evening service through, and God was moving. Monday night and Tuesday night, we have combined churches, hub and bow, Pastor David will know he used to have harp and bow. Harp and bow is prayer and praise. The harp is praise. The bow is the incense, the prayer. So we have harp and bow for two nights. And Pastor Josie too comes from LA. And she is uh, Mandarin speaking. I was supposed to interpret for her into English. I couldn't do it. No voice. Monday, Tuesday, and the church, they make me lemon drink, they pray for me, they, they did whatever they can try to restore my voice. Nothing happened. On Wednesday, I told the church, I'm not going to the office. I stay at home. And I came before the Lord. God, what happened? Sunday morning, I was perfect. I, I preached, I sang. And then what the Lord said, you were proud. You were proud. My first reaction said, no, God, I gave you the glory after I preached. 
I give you the glory. The Lord said, you were proud because you think you were not proud. You know, you are proud for being not proud. The Lord woke me up. You are proud. It's like when you're humble, you're proud being so humble. You know, you're proud because you're, you were not proud. It's, it's that thin line, you know. And the Lord told me something that really scared me. He said, I didn't even have to kill you. I just took the voice, your voice away from you. See what you can do. What else can you do? Wow, it really scared me. The Lord said, I didn't even have to kill you. I just took your voice away. See what you can do. If I don't obey next time, you will kill me. <laughs> so I quickly repent and ask forgiveness. And say, Lord, take every pride that is in me. Give the spirit of humility of the Son, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself became of a servant. And being found in the form of the servant, he even suffered the death, death of the cross. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I ask God, help me. And immediately, I was healed. I was healed. Until today. Praise the Lord. So, pride is the air. Have to take out of the clay. If you don't have, if you don't remove the clay and the air and the impurities and from the clay, when you fire, it will break. It will break. And another point that the last video say after the potter has done everything, he put the clay to dry. The clay to dry. And drying takes a long time. If you don't dry properly, completely, the clay will explode when it's under fire. And you know the first thing, the clay has to be set on the potter's wheel. It has to be totally centered. It must be centered. If it's slightly off, the clay will wobble and you can never make a, a clay, uh, clay pot at all. It will flow out of the, the whole lump of clay will flow out of the uh, spinning wheel. The first thing we will need God to do in our life is to be centered with God's purpose and God's calling in your life. You must center your life with God's purpose. With God's purpose. And then the, the two hands never leave. The, the wheel keeps spinning, never stop. And we have one hand, Pastor Short say, interior. The first thing, the clay, we have to put our finger in the middle and really work from inside, inside out. So God is going to open our heart. Our heart has to be open. It's painful. Dealt with what is inside. And then from inside, we slowly make the uh, clay open wider. And this hand is always on the outside, guiding it. The hands never leave the clay. And the hands are very gentle. Very gentle. Very gentle. And the mid, when we are making the clay pot, our concentration, we cannot look here, cannot look at Concentration is there. And that's why the hand of God is molding us. He's totally looking at you. You are the center. We are the center of what he's doing. And whatever we want is how we, we do it with our fingers, with our hand, with a sponge. And then when the clay is done only, then the wheel is stopped. So sometimes in our life, it's like going round and round. God, when is it going to stop? This vicious cycle, because the work is not done. 
when God, what God wants to do with you, he will stop the spinning. And the clay, you, you, we have to be wet all the time. Our finger, there is always a water by the side. The clay has to be wet. Our hand has to be wet. The water has to be constantly in our hand in the clay. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God must be in our everyday life before God can shape us. God can lead us anywhere. And are you willing to get, let God work on you? Amen? Total submission, yielding. Yielding. Until God said, time's up. You can take out of the spinning and the drying period, you are putting on the shelf to dry. It may take long. Every part has to be dried, perfectly even. Otherwise, when you fire, it's going to break. And then when you think everything is done, you are put in the fire. That's where the test comes. Any impurity, any air, any water, the clay will break and water will make the clay pot explode. Let us read the next scripture. Acts chapter 9, that is God talking about Paul. Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 9, verse 12 and 16. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias came and placed his hand on Saul to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to you, your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Chosen vessel. God chose Saul. He must suffer for my name. So when you are chosen by God, you are not chosen to be on the bed of roses. God has to shape us, to correct us, to mold us, to take out any pride, any personal agenda, that we are totally yielded to the potter's hand. The next uh, picture, please. Okay. This is the most expensive vase that is sold in the auction market. Terry, if you are very rich, how much are you going to pay for this vase? Very rich, very rich. Ha, huh, you want to pay. How much is worth, you think? About? Three or four million. You are way, way off. 105 million. Auction 2011, November in London. And this vase was put in a dusty attic for decades. And only when the owner died, one of the relatives came out to clean the attic, found it. Thank God he didn't give it to Value Village. <laughs> found it. And at first auction was only about 1,000 or a few thousand pounds. But the, the person who found it knew that it's worth more than that. And he held it for 40 years and came back, sold for 30 million or 40 million. And the last auction, and not only is 105 million, this vase has to hotly contested. And a long legal battle has been fought for this vase. 
We are very precious, and the enemy is hotly contesting to each and every one of us and fighting legally to own us. But praise God, Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary, He paid the full price. He paid the highest price for you and me. We are all priceless. He paid the highest price for you and me. You know why this bus is so special? There were a lot of us made in the same period of time. The first is, is made in the Qin Dynasty, Emperor's Kiln. It's made in the house of the emperor. Secondly, it has the Emperor Qianlong's seal underneath it. And we are made in the house of the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? And in Ephesians chapter, let us read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. We have the seal of God in our life. The seal of God. The seal. Let us read Ephesians chapter 1. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed. You were marked in him with a seal, the promise of Holy Spirit. And who is the deposit guarantee of our inheritance and the redemption and those who got pos God's possession to the praise of his glory. Oh, wow. Get aside. Here I am, more precious than you. You know that bus can buy two blocks of black tidings and more. That little bus. Why is the bus so precious? Because it's because of the clay, dirt cheap clay. It's a lump of dirt cheap. That's why we always say dirt cheap. Dirt is cheap. Dirt cheap clay. Are you going to be the lump of the clay, dirt cheap clay, or you want to be like this? You have to let the porter. It's the porters. It's the master who have crafted a dirt cheap lump of clay into this beauty. And you see the lattice work at the bottom? If there is any impurity or air or any water before it's being fired, the whole pot will be broken into pieces. Let us all rise up. He is the porter. We are the clay. You have a choice. You want to be that cheap lump of clay or you want to be like this? A vessel of honor, like Paul. Paul has said, I kept the faith, I've run the race. From now on, there is a crown of righteousness, a crown of glory reserved for me. Not only for me, for all. Each and every one of us. As we sang, I will ask Pastor K to come and do the altar call. You all please come up. Response to the potter's hand. Thank you. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be vessels of honor? Yes, yes, we do. And that's why we need to say yes to the Lord again and again. Let's uh, let the worship team uh, lead us in uh, a song, and then we're going to just spend a few minutes in God's presence, giving ourselves, saying, yes, yes, Lord, make me what you want me to be. Hallelujah. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure. All of my days are held in your hand. 
哈利路亚。To the potter tonight, let's say, Jesus, have your way with me. Make me, break me, fill me, use me. Oh, just have your way. And I'm just going to ask you to just respond. Just come up around this altar for a few minutes tonight, and we're just going to respond to the Lord. I've learned when you hear a challenge. In a message of challenge, you should always take a step of faith and respond to it, and you'll be surprised how God will work in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, let everyone that feels this challenge of the Spirit to become used of God, to be made into the vessel of your choice. Just let them respond in faith and say, "Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yes. God bless you. Hamduri bi salamando." Joyfully to the Lord. 
because he will take over. He will do the guiding. He will do the leading. He will work in your heart and spirit. And oh, he not only will do that, but he'll fill you. Fill you with his spirit. Fill you with his love. Fill you so you can pour out to others. Hallelujah. So let's lift our hands to heaven for a moment or two. Let's say yes, Lord. Everybody just pray in your own way for a moment or two. And then we're going to ask God to touch us and to fill us and to make us all that he wants us to be. Oh, halama salamandai. Yes, Lord, we give ourselves. Make us into the vessel of your choice. Lord, have your way. Have your way. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way in every heart, in every life. Rabanda yesu lamakandai. Lord, come. Come with your mercy. Come with your grace. Come with the power of your spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ripandu Ramandai. Use everyone, Lord. Hallelujah. Vessels of honor for the Lord. Oh, my God, do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's begin now to thank him. He's heard you. He's seen the dedication of your heart. He's saying yes, yes, yes. Oh, let's thank him. Let's worship him now. Worship Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we believe, we believe, we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Manduria Ramosalamayana Mandaya. Let there be a fresh move, a fresh stir in every heart. Oh, and let that mighty power of God's Spirit move and stir us for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabababariandai, we give ourselves to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get free in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Begin to pray in tongues right now by the power of the Spirit of God. Anduribi salamayana makuta yaramando. Horribi silamandai. Lucia rimindai. Every yoke is broken. Oh, we are free, free, free to worship thee. Hallelujah. 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 Rabababari siyalamando. Fill everyone, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. They may be workers together with God, hallelujah. By the power of God, by the presence of the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord. It's not by might or power, but by your spirit. Oh, we praise you. <laughs> we praise you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We believe it. We receive it. We will walk in it. Hallelujah. Have your wonderful way. And just before we go tonight, I want you to turn to somebody.
and pray with them and they with you for just a minute or two and, and just pray the blessing of God and the anointing of God, the strength of the Lord to flow into each other. Amen. Can you do that? Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody beside you, somebody you want to pray with, just do it. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Oh, Rasalamayala Mosandai. Pray together. And together the strength flows. Together the blessing comes. Hallelujah. Oh, Ribibabamarandai. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let your anointing flow. Let the power of your presence be here. Glory, 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 glory to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, yes, Lord. The power of your presence, the blessing of heaven in the name of Jesus. Glorify the name. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Well, let's just lift our hands to heaven now and give God a big shout of victory and praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless each one, bless each one in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, <clears throat> hallelujah. Now, Father, we thank you tonight for your presence. We thank you that your word is true, and we pray that, that each one will have the presence of God and the anointing of God and the wisdom of God flowing in their lives and use them for your glory and make them all that you want them to be. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you all. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. When we see you, when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your 